Wife, I'm live. Stop with the kitten videos and start with the comments. She's not facing me, so she didn't see me shaking my fist. If she did, she would have worked faster. I'm sure of it. Okay. So I'm going to do a sock mask or two tonight. I must get my socks. Hello, Percy. Greenhouse moths. Hello. These are little head socks that I buy. You can buy them uh, from Amazon. I buy them from China because I buy a bunch. So I buy a bunch at a time. But they're about 10 bucks a piece. And uh, even if you're just wearing a mask, they're not a bad idea to wear under it. Especially if you're in a haunt situation where you're sharing a mask with people. Uh, that's a nice barrier. It's nice and cool. Hey, Alexa, add contact cement to my shopping list. I've put contact cement on your shopping list. Luckily, I have two. So I think tomorrow I'm not going to work on anything. I'm just going to clean the shop. Uh, the problem is I have so many projects partially finished, started, whatever. Like I have stuff for Transworld that I never really even finished, but it still takes up shop space. Because once it was called off, there was no point in finishing it. So I'm just gonna contact cement this hood, and then I'm gonna grab a mask, and I'll contact cement that, and then they're gonna be friends. And we'll stay together forever. I have to say, home Orlando is under stay-at-home mandate. So are we here in Texas. Luckily, this shop is about 100 feet from my front door. I'm supposed to be on lockdown, but I still wander around, said cobwebs and candlesticks. I have a shirt like that, but in what? Yeah? This one, this particular version, was drawn by my friend Cora, who works at Dark Hour. It's a little different from the normal one that's out there. Every right now and then, Cora joins us for live videos. And frankly, we're getting a lot of folks joining us for live videos, because they ain't got nothing else to do. It's Friday, they ain't got no job. Greetings from Sweden. Hello, Sweden. Are there any big projects you're working on? Uh, always. I'm always working on big projects. Um, right now I'm making some sock masks. Those are small projects. But I'm also dialing in the hunchback. I mean, there's a lot of little things that I'm doing. I just want to take this guy, Grave Digger. Ta-da! The hunchback. And we'll go here. Yep. Got the Grinch mask from you. It's a masterpiece. Thank you. Oh, wax man. excellent. Very good. Very good. 
and it's a Grouch. Grinch is copyrighted. Uh, Grouch is, is is what what that mask is called. If you ever need help making my masks, I always come to you. Uh -huh. Who was that? Lenny Max. Well, when when we're allowed to travel, we'll talk. Lots of people are saying hello to each other. Okay. All right, so now we have to wait, you know, five, six minutes. And it's actually kind of a muggy night, so it's probably going to take a little bit longer. I'm going to grab another head and prep another one. Why make one mask when you can make two in the same amount of time? All I'm doing right now is waiting. So, person from Sweden... What, uh, do you have, is there a big Halloween in Sweden? I ask because I don't know. I know some countries are just kind of picking it up, like Australia, but you actually you have to wait till it's dry. Um, whenever you're using a new adhesive, read the instructions, just go back to take the time and do it. Um, it's worth it. Adhesives all behave very differently. Uh, a lot of people that I know hated Gorilla Glue. It's like, well, did you wet everything first? Like, what do you mean? Well, you're supposed to get it wet because it's Gorilla Glue and water helps activate it. Do you wait till it's tacky and then stick it on? You wait till it's dry and then you stick it on. Uh, tacky, it, it starts tacky, it sticks back. But that would be a temporary bond, not a permanent bond. And I want a permanent bond. Did you and the old lady go fishing yet? Uh, no, we have not gone fishing yet. <laughs> I call her the wife. I do not call her the old lady. <laughs> but I appreciate your enthusiasm. We have not gone fishing. No, uh, I may go fishing tomorrow. Why don't you repeat the shop tomorrow? We'll see what happens, honey. <laughs> Can't clean the shop all day. Hey, Alan, do you recall about three years ago a young man showed up at dark hour? I just remembered my nephew liking about going to a haunted house in Texas to find a job. He met you and others. Still met you. What's your nephew's name? Lenny Mass says for sure. For my mass, I just use latex paint to paint them, but I heard people use rubber cement mixed with acrylics to paint latex. Have you ever tried rubber cement to paint your masks? I have. I don't like its shelf life. Uh, it'll solidify on you in the in the jar. So you have to mix it up like right when you use it. You can't let it sit for a few months. And uh, I like my latex mask paint. One third casting latex. One third, um, one third casting latex. One third distilled water and one third house paint from Home Depot, which is acrylic, by the way. They call it latex house paint, but it's actually acrylic based. Well, the stores do wish it was, but it was really that day. Mostly an excuse for gals to dress as slutty babes, of course. That's sweet, sweet. Aha! Sweet. Well, you have some of the good parts of Halloween. Maybe all the monster stuff will catch up. We call her your better half. She certainly is my better half. You That's... gave him the tour and you and you met him. Thank you. Oh. Jason. Jason. Jason? Does the contact cement soak through the head soap? Uh, a little bit, yes. You'll see when I go to remove it. But uh, not so bad that it's um, bad. I go fishing in finer drainage ditches everywhere. Um, really, like, uh, I don't go to nice places to go fishing. I don't go to, like, a public park or, um, pier. yeah, or a pier or a nice lake by a campground. No, uh, I go to drainage ditch. I'm looking for alligator gar is what I look for. That's the kind of fish I like to catch. Um, I also catch uh, largemouth bass, but mostly I go for gar because it's really fun to catch a dinosaur. And alligator gar are some scary looking fish. Thank you, Alan. 
maybe tomorrow I might sculpt a dagger handle or maybe just watch cartoons on it. Okay. I would suggest the dagger handle because then you produce something. Try to create more than you consume if you can help it. All the lights around here where I live at, have shut down and will let us fish. Well, yeah, see, I, don't, I go where people don't go fishing. Sorry for the old lady comment. <laughs> I, I accept your apology. I call my wife the scary lady. Uh, Gar is awesome here in Texas. I wish I could fish, but can't. Done here at the moment. They can't fish where they are. Fondant. I'm happy that I've caught one of your live streams, as I'm from London, so I'm always asleep when you go live, but I'm staying up late tonight. Oh. Uh, what time is it in London? How much would a Ron Perlman head cost me? I don't want to use it. I just want to admire it on my workbench. Well, it's not actually Ron Perlman. Just people call it the Ron Perlman head. So, and you could get it from Asylum Props, Richard Teachout. Uh, he's who I got that one from. That's not one of the ones that I cast it up myself. I like it. it's a good sized head, so I like it for that reason. Um, you know, the, a mask stretch, yes, but if you can start them out good sized, it just helps. I was thinking about going tomorrow, but i got to find a nice spot. I just moved here. Psycho Axeman says they'll eat the cheese frozen on the uh, That sounds like you're going for catfish. Uh, normally I use lures. I, I'm a lure fisherman. Uh, because I don't want to mess with bait most of the time. you got to transport it and, you know, frozen or it's not too frozen or it's alive and tries to swim away. Alan, where are you in Colorado again? You'll need to try some trout fishing with air fighters. I'm not in Colorado. I am in Texas. But when I'm in Colorado again, I will tell people. I think that's what they meant. And I have gone fishing for trout uh, in South Texas, actually. That's not too late. So will we ever see you make a wall of gore the head hunting style? Um, it's possible. I mean, when, uh, when this virus clears up, I'll give you guys a tour of my monster museum, which is very similar to that scene in Headhunter. It's all these different heads on plaques that I have made. Yes, uh, and I will. Um, I normally go for Monster Day in August, and then I, um, my friend uh, Michael Edwards and Bart Butler, they work at Terror in the Corn up there. So I have visited them before. Colorado is also just a beautiful state. Well, hello. Are mostly Slipknot replicas. Have you ever heard of them? I've heard of the band Slipknot, um, but that's copyrighted material. Like that's their design and their look, so I don't make those. Curse my dreaded sense of morality. I shun the mask money. I just, I just don't do it. The band money. Masked bands are very popular now. And they're, they're, they're like Michael Myers mask collectors. It's like, this is an Iowa Sid from the second concert series that he wore for 12 minutes. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm just not, I'm not there. All right, so now this is sticking very well to this. And uh, I'm making like a great bigger shark. See that fin I'm putting in his head? That's cool, right? Maybe not. Psycho Axeman says, 
motorcycle accident says, damn, poor post-mortem people. Yeah, I understand that. They seem to not care too much, though. I met some of them a couple of months ago and showed them one of my maps. They seem to like it. But I recently started working on my own designs. Yeah, yeah, that, that's where I have more fun. So I made it into a fan so I can cut it. And that I'll leave a little bit like that. Okay, now see, now there's not this weird puff at the top of the head. And all that this is doing is cleaning up the lines. I could just glue it on and leave it a little bit wrinkly, but this is a nice, this is a cleaner presentation. Uh, back here didn't quite get enough contact cement, so I'll hit that. This is Chaney. Uh, he's in charge of breaking down cardboard boxes in the shop so that we can uh, put them, yeah. There you go. Yes, yeah, he's picking up, you know, he's getting things ready for tomorrow for the big cleaning push. Yes. So, what's the best way to paint it without killing my lungs? Uh, you, you, just, you just gotta kill your lungs. I mean, that's, uh, it's Solvent City, man. Uh, that's, that's what it is. Uh, just because so few things stick to polyurethane foam. I use a one part urethane called snake skin. It's, it's not the best for you, but it's not the worst. Uh, you get that from a company called Douglas and Sturgis. Chewing a box apart uh, again, also. Bella is helping him. Yeah, my mom will be happy about that. I'm 17. I'm still at home with my family. I make most of my masks in my basement. Where do you make your masks out of? Sounds very interesting. Lanny Mass says, I made most out of latex, but super recently I've started messing around with PU foam. Cool. Yeah, it's just hard to paint. Can you recap how you made the half mass materials you used methods? Thanks. Uh, there's videos. Like go go like uh, put I have a latex mask making um, playlist, and that is what you want on my channel. But you make a sculpt in clay, you mold it in plaster, and then you take out your sculpting form, you take out all the clay that was in there, and then you uh, I power wash it to get it good and clean, and then I fill it with latex. Size 
Have you ever used EVA foam in contact cement before? Because that is an easy way to do it. Just make a pattern off of someone about the same size, and you use that pattern to uh, make those parts out of EVA foam. A lot of my bodies and uh, dummies now, I'm making out of EVA. What about him? Oh my goodness. Psycho, my wife says you chipped in money again. Thank you, sir. That's not what he did. No? He just laid it down. Okay, well. Um, say thank you. Thank you. My wife says I should say thank you, so you I say thank you. very generous. I just make the monsters. Yeah. Um, hi, Paul. Yes, I'm here. Uh, let me ask. I tell, I tell that to everyone who asks me how to make masks. I either send them to you, or distortions are really not that hard to find. Yeah, man, distortions is, is uh, really awesome. I consider Ed a very good friend. He, uh, he taught me a lot. He is one of the godfathers of this. This is blue shop towel. Um, I have plenty of time, so I'll show you. Contact cement should stick to a mannequin. See what that did? Uh, but that's how I got that nice smooth dome of the head. Otherwise, the mask and the uh, head form wouldn't quite line up. What are you making tonight? I'm making some half masks. Uh, we're going to continue down the Grey Digger Road. Have you ever worked personally with Ed Edmonds before? Uh, only on the show Making Monsters. I was on a couple episodes of that. Uh, but yes, I mean, we consulted with some things with him at Dark Hour. Have I worked in his shop? No, I have not. Uh, thank you, cobwebs and candlesticks. My wife is shaking her head, but she's shaking her head in a smiling way, That's just not amazing. in a what the hell did you just bring in the house kind of way. So Stan Winston classes don't show this. Uh, I think they could. Um, just a lot of what they do on the Stan Winston classes are just so far above our level. And you don't need it for most haunt situations. I mean, some of the stuff that I do is above the level that you need for a home haunt or even a smaller haunt. <clears throat> Will dog days come back this summer? Oh, yeah. Uh, our current plan is to carry on with dog days. Um, if, if we're allowed to. I mean, we are going to 100% do what we have to do to protect our staff and our customers. But we, we do need... Um, as soon as we're able to start gathering and having events, we're going to gather, we're going to have events. Because the world needs that, too. I haven't hugged anybody but my wife, I think, in two weeks. <laughs> I'm not even a big hugger, but, you know, it, it, you, you can feel it, you know. For those who were interested last night in the Stan Winston video by Immortal Masks on Silicone, mask making is up on their website, Poxy Bowl. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, that, that's, that's really good. And if my first silicone mask, it cost me about $2,000 to learn how to make it. Because, you know, there, there just is, there's not a way, good way to do it. Um, at that time, nothing taught you how. You had to figure it out. I see over on this guy, a little bit here looks a little dry, and I want that soaked in. I'm going to rebase that, so... What kind of past cap mask are you making tonight? Uh, this is a character called the Grave Digger. I'm doing two of those. I want to install crew for Hello Screams at Bush Gardens that we received an email today that we all got laid off due to COVID-19. Was Corona affecting Dark Hour? 
Oh yeah, we've we've uh, already canceled the show. We we canceled our March show, which we were going to do. Um, but uh, then we didn't do it. See how I like when I am. Oh yeah, we we me and Shannon really we went there. We loved it. Um, we had a lot of good houses and themes. So beautiful. I liked it. It was small, you know. It was smaller than the big shows, and it was such a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think everyone can see the silicone mask in the process. They would understand why it costs so much to do. Oh, it's, it's ridiculous difficult. Um, several of the guys who work at Immortal, I. I actually taught how to make silicone masks way back when no one was, was, was teaching. You know, by sitting on the phone with them for a couple hours or whatever, just to, because it, it's, a, it's a tough concept. What is the cloth on the bus before you put the mask on? It's a head sock. One of these guys. I'm also a long time viewer. And your placard glove video was the first one I watched to help me to bring placard gloves to Hallow Street. Awesome. That's very cool. Sixty-four people watching. Today. Just a head sock. A balaclava, kind of. But it's uh, it's a thin spandex one. You don't want it too thin, like pantyhose material. The weight of the mask would actually stretch it, and then it wouldn't fit right. So, I, I like um, the, the spandex ones. They're, all, they're like bathing suit weight. And I use those. What's that, honey? Um, if you just want like a cheapy version, you can get them from Sherman Williams for like three dollars. Let me show you what one of those looks like. Yes, no, Zach if I don't. Aha. This is a Home Depot spray sock, which uh, you get from, surprise, Home Depot. They're about $3. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like. And I use these for uh, these masks all the time. It's very similar. But you don't have the nice rounded head. So you put it on inside out, and then you at least get your corners stay tucked, and that is a little rounder. But uh, it works just fine. Uh, hi, Chad. Which Chad? Chad, who, uh, uh, who was going to come to Monster Camp. Oh, hey. Uh, Lanny Mask sent us four pounds and 99, and I don't know how much that is in, in American dollars. 
Oh. Thank you, lady. How much is that? I know the Australian dollar is not doing oh, well. Yeah. That is very kind of you guys. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, we, you know, normally, like tonight, I would not go live because I'm just filling orders in the shop. But frankly, um, people need something to do right now, you know? Um, we're not going out of the house. We're, their entertainment is limited. And you can only Netflix so much. Yeah, I mean, I, I always have the shop to keep me busy, so I don't worry about that too much. Is 200 pounds of Ultra Cow I see on that stool? Uh, yes, it is. Is that 200 pounds? It's Ultra Cal 30, 200 pounds. So you're putting the excess fold and then applying contact cement over the small gap? Yes, with um, shop towel. Like right now, I'm painting little pieces of shop towel that I tore up uh, with the contact cement. And I'm going to pick them up, and they're going to become like a second skin on this. Is the straw sentinel uh, folded yet? No, he's right here. Um... Under that bag, and I will probably mold him. I'll probably mold him tomorrow. Has it ever put pantyhose on someone, someone's arms, airbrushed, and then were able to reuse on other nights without repainting? Yes. Yes, I have. You cut a head hole in the crotch, and you cut finger and thumb holes in the feet. We had a doll character in Carl's we did that with because we, we bought the pantyhose that had the doll joints on it and we painted some cracks and things. Tearing up cardboard must be exhausting. Yes. <laughs> you caught a napping. Uh, it, every anything that we can do. What can I do? I can go live. I can talk to people, so folks think they've got a friend with them. You know, because uh, some people are quarantined alone. Thank God I've got a wife. I have a wife. Sent you a message on Facebook where you can see the latex on the first stuff. Awesome. Where did you get your faux fur for your masks and costumes? Uh, I buy from a company called Monterey Mills, but they sell by the roll, so just be prepared for that. Uh, they're not um, like Joann's where you can buy a yard or two. Uh, you're going to buy a, a roll, which is 16 yards, but it's eleven fifty a yard. This is better than master plots. Uh Well, I mean, that's... We both have the same goal, me and, me and Z Master Class. What's the blue paper? Uh, shop towels, just like shop paper towels. Uh, they're blue, they're a little sturdier. Tony, Tony Pierce, thanks to Alan, we have not watched Netflix at all during the shutdown. We've been making stuff because we had a great teacher. You know what, and you guys are killing it. Every now and then I just look over at my dog and see what they have in their mouth that they shouldn't. There's nothing in here they should have in their mouth. Bella has decided to sit and quietly eat a broom. And I'm at a point in my life where I'm going to let her. This glue here that I'm using is contact cement. It is weld wood contact cement. Similar to barge, but it's uh, cheaper and I just like the way it flows and um, I, I like it more than barge. How many rolls of fur do you go through for dog days? I'm planning on doing a lot of good werewolf versus 
this human fat hybrid spot this year, and I'm going to make all my costumes. Um, so depending upon how you outfit them, if you're doing like full bodies, then you're looking at four or five yards for uh, a character. If you are doing um, just like shirts with uh, hair in the chest and uh, hair on the gloves, then you can get, get away with like two and a half yards per character. So it all depends. So one of those grave diggers hours, it's kind of fierce. Uh, it's, no, I think yours is all ready to go. No, yours, Connie, you're getting the original. Yeah, you guys were the first ones to order, so, you so you're the, actually getting the original grave digger. And the costume. And the costume. Uh, I got a German Shepherd that won't stop licking her paws. <laughs> that's a big dark thing. Yeah, that's weird. Do you know what the, do you know what the Kuki Boogeyman, I'm sure what that means. Uh, Kukui? Kukui Boogeyman? Uh, yeah, um, it is, uh, well, I know about it from Puerto Rico, and, uh, it, it's a, it's similar to La Llorona, kind of, it is a, um, Hispanic boogeyman, it's not your normal English boogeyman. Are you still going to the Texas Hunters Convention? Um, Still Feast will have a booth there. We'll have two booths, actually. Um, well, as long as I don't have to, that's good. Okay. And you know what? I have, because I sculpted a few turds in my day and uh, had to deliver something awesome. Oh, wow. What kind of context of it? I heard cheaper than barge. Barge, and noticed that it was as stringy and messy as barge. Weldwood contact cement. Bing. What's the first horror movie you ever remember watching? The Mushroom People. It's not a good horror movie, but it's you know what? Uh, the Mushroom People. Yeah, that that's a big one. Say hello, Ezekiel. Hey, Ezekiel. And you know what? I just found another horror movie that I, back before HBO and Cinemax and all that, there was a, a paid channel called Super TV. And uh, we were poor, but my, I, my grandparents were wealthy. And what I mean when I say wealthy is they weren't living paycheck to paycheck. Um, and they had Super TV. And on that was a horror movie called Time Walker, which was about an alien mummy who came back to life and killed a bunch of people. And it was really cool. Time Walker. And I just watched it again like two days ago. Just did the veil light move with the glue. I did. <laughs> Yeah, I want you guys to see the glue. It's great, great stuff foam like ice cream swirl. Makes a great turd. Uh, yes, it does. I prefer a sculptable turd that you can make from Loctite foam. Loctite foam, in my opinion, is superior to great stuff in every way. Alan, do you keep a portfolio of your work over the years? Not really. I'm terrible. Um, I just make stuff, I mean, a lot of stuff will leave and I didn't even get a picture of it. I'm not even kidding. I'm just not good at that. How do you, how do you go about adding facial hair? Uh, you just add it, you put it on there. Um, uh, I use um, clear silicone caulking most of the time. Clear silicone caulk. And I use uh, hair weave hair. There are lots of videos where I am hairing masks. I just switched to Weldwood, thanks to you. I've been using it the last three days and love it so much more than Barge. Uh, I do too. Barge. It's just easier to work with. It sounds like something that George would make. Half. What's your favorite horror movie? What's my favorite horror movie? Um... 
Because there's a lot of... All right, so I'm going to be very clear here. I will say I don't like horror movies. I like monster movies. A horror movie can be a guy chopping other people up with a uh, axe and eating them. That's a horror movie. But that happens on CNN all the time. So I don't... I don't... That's not fantasy. That's not... It's not what I want. I like monster movies where there is a supernatural element and often there's a guy in a rubber suit. That is what I like the most. So you're talking about movies like Pumpkinhead, The Relic. Um, boy, there's so many. Just real good ones. Creature from the Black Lagoon is one of the first like guy in a suit movies. Okay, so this guy is well patched now. And when I'm putting this on, I use ripped edges. A, an edge that wasn't ripped, if it was just put on there, you know, that straight edge, your eye picks that up. And when I dry brush, that'll stand out like a sore thumb. But it won't with it, I use the ripped edges. And now this guy has been treated. And I'll move in. See how I'm not wasting my dry time? I'm keeping two working. I should be keeping three working because it's not quite getting dry in the time we've got. Curious, is you using contact cement in place of latex for that due to drying time? Uh, partially due to drying time, also due to control. Um, and latex sticks to latex okay, but contact cement is an adhesive, so it's going to stick even better. Uh, not my favorite. Uh, killer Clowns is not my favorite. Best place to buy chip brushes to save money? I go through so many. Amazon. Uh, I buy like a pack of 96 and it's like 30 bucks. Alan, what do you think of using a foam latex face prosthetic on a soft mask? Oh, absolutely. People do that all the time. Uh, you can actually get a real nice movable piece. Where did you get your inspiration for Carl? Um, I threw my back out. And when I threw my back out, I couldn't be in the stilt costume that I wanted to be in, that I had been wearing. So I had a jumpsuit that I bought at a yard sale, and I had a big plastic cleaver that I bought because I liked it. And I did my makeup kind of crazy and did my hair. I had mud mask. Yeah. And we used uh, mud mask uh, to dirty up the hair and stuff, and that's because I, I needed it. I needed a character. So I came out of the bag uh, pretty fast. Yeah, see that one has one big patch on top of the head. And this one has two on the sides. Uh, think, hair is going to cover all of it, so it doesn't really matter. I think Creature is probably my all-time favorite monster movie. Uh, in a way, it, it kind of has to be. It, uh, it's a wonderful movie. Um, Frankenstein is pretty amazing. There are, uh, there's a theory out there that there's just two types of monsters. The kind that man created, Frankenstein, and the beast within men, which is Wolfman. So, those two monsters. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I now have these guys to this stage. I need that to dry before I can uh, repaint. And then I'll, you know what? I can do my dry brushing on this and just avoid that area. And then I'll catch this area up. Now let me see if I can find a chip brush. I'll show you, tell you the kind I get. Pro grades supplies.com progradesupplies.com and there were 96 chip brushes in here and each one says progradesupplies.com and that's probably backwards I did 
get them from Harbor Freight. A uh, pack of 36 for $7. But um, now I normally get them from Amazon. Because I can get 96 at a time. Especially while I'm on quarantine lockdown. I'm glad I had to show you one because, frankly, I needed one anyway. Harbor Freight chip brushes, thirty-six for ten dollars. Says to pick you up. Says a lot. Here's yeah, that, that's not bad at all. I'm sure you like werewolf movies. Uh, I love werewolf movies. What were your thoughts on the new hit movie? Uh, I didn't see part two. Uh, yeah, I saw we, part one. We own part two. We just haven't watched yeah, it. Yeah, we just haven't watched it yet. Um, we don't watch a lot of TV. I'm in the shop a lot. Um, it was it was very well done. It was the series was was very well done. The the first one, um, extremely well done. Uh, I think that the right amount of scares, right amount of comedy, it was nice. Harbor Freight, Palmer's favorite. I missed the beginning. Is the mask you're working over out of the same mold? Yeah, both of these are the same. My favorite movie is the black and white werewolf movie. Which which black and white werewolf movie? Have to say, thank you so much to you guys being in lockdown with my kids watching these videos. God said, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's Ezekiel. Well, very cool. Uh, you know, it's good to have something to watch that, you know, you know, we're not going to get too blue. We're not going to, uh, we don't drop a lot of F-bombs, you know, we're, we're a pretty stable crew. Exactly two monsters, $5 from Psycho Axeman, or exactly two monsters. Thank you, Psycho Axeman. Dead End Yard Haunt. I bought an evil teddy bear mask for you this morning. I couldn't resist it. Awesome. Aren't they fun? They are fun. They are, uh, they're a blast. We'll ship you out on, on, uh, Monday. Get in your hunts. Oh, let's see. Have to wonder how long before we can get items shipped from China. Uh, where are you? Because, um, I, I still can get items shipped from China. Dean Lorenz says, it's my birthday today. Hey, happy birthday! Cobwebs and Candlestick says, save the brush handles. They made great pumpkin stem bases. I don't need that many pumpkin stems. What's the best way of cleaning the inside of the sock mask? Um, you take um, some paper towels and you put them in 99% alcohol and you just set them inside of there and you let the vapor of the alcohol decontaminate everything. Um, that's, that's one way of doing it. Let the vapor from the alcohol come out of those paper towels and it'll permeate the inside and kill all that bacteria. Because that's what you're really trying to do is get rid of that bacteria. Do you attach the mask at the neck to the sock mask? Uh, not too much because it has so much stretch to it. And this mask also is going to have a javit collar, which is that fluffy collar thing. Uh, and that's going to go over this flap and hold it down. Is and Bart I, still in the dark hour? Uh, Bart is in Colorado now at um, Terror in the Corn. Could you talk a little bit more about the Plague Doctor masks? A couple of my actors bought them and want to be twin doctors. Chad Smith. Okay. Um, well, do you know what Plague Doctors were and why that mask is popular? Uh, the, what a Plague Doctor was, was back in the bubonic plague, um, doctors invented that style of mask. 
And that long beak that's on it, they would stuff with flowers because back then the thinking was that you would get the plague from bad vapors, bad smells, basically. And those vapors or ill humors would come into you uh, through your nose. You breathe them in. So if you could fill the, uh, the end of that mask with flowers or a pomander or just something in order to... Um, not smell the vapors. It helps I thought, you. I thought they just stopped shipment due to COVID-19. Just something I heard, obviously not true. I don't know. I, 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 don't know. I haven't had any issues. I haven't had anybody because say, hey, yesterday. I can't ship that. Um, yeah, but that package I got yesterday was shipped probably two weeks ago. Let's see. It does you? take like 14 to 19 days to get here. What are you working on tonight? I'm working on grave digger masks. Flowers and incense. Yes, the flowers give with you. Renee and I just received an order from China today. Renee, I just received that's Michael Lasseter. Chad says they are super creepy. Good stuff. Did Dark Hour take part in the House October bills? We did not. Um, I was asked to. See, here's all the haunters that you see interviewed in that, Dean Yarnig, Bart Butler. They were all told it was going to be a documentary. Mm -hmm. And it, it was not a documentary. So they were speaking to people as if it was a documentary. And then they decided to go a different direction with the movie, but they kept all that footage. So the, the guys who were in it aren't necessarily thrilled with how that came out. And I just want the back of this to blend in with the front more. I'm still getting packages from China. We've been warned that the virus can stay on the boxes for up to 12 hours. Take precautions when getting packages. Well, if you can get something from China in 12 hours, you're doing better than I am. It takes me weeks to get something. Uh, normally buy an e-packet or whatever they call it. I'm still getting, oh, are you looking forward? Godzilla versus Kong, King of the Monsters. I can not wait. Uh, I'm very excited about that. I'm sad that there's some Marvel movies whose release date is being pushed back quite a bit. But, uh, what do you do? Alright, so this guy is kind of set. All that I can do with that color for now. Loving the streams. Nice having something casual playing while painting. Yeah, you know, it's just it's nice to watch people make stuff. Um, it, it really is to me. Ezekiel, everything in Australia will try to kill you. Boxes are the least of your concern. Yes, yeah. Good. Australia don't play. Speaking of documentaries, do you know anything about one? The flat boy is backing. I've heard it mentioned, but I haven't seen anything on it. No, not yet. Can I buy one of those molds? Uh, oh, you mean buy a blank? We do have grave digger blanks, I think, on the website. No. Oh, well, we will. <laughs> we'll add them. That way folks can make their own grave digger mask. Are those base painted, or did, you, or did the latex cure gray? Uh, I paste them in black. I believe you. I do too. At least your liver is tougher than all of tough, them. Tough, tough, tough. <laughs> Would you ever try the so-called haunt McKinney Manor? No, I have not. It doesn't even sound like fun. Would you ever? No, it doesn't even sound like fun. And it doesn't sound like a haunted house either. Um, there is... There is a magic and a contract to what we do in haunting where and i don't like touch haunts because they 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 break the wrong rules and it is our job to get you as scared as we can without touching you without crossing that line and if you have to cross the line to do it i think you you cheat it yeah i mean i can i can punch somebody and make them afraid of me that, uh, you know, 
but being able to do it without touching it, that's impressive. Getting things done without, without, without that basis physical presence. Yes. Chad Smith says, I agree, it is no way in a haunt. Paul Rhodes says, I have to wear a respirator when I'm using contacts, no matter I get a headache, but my space is always much smaller. Uh, and I also have two air scrubbers going in here, so they're pulling fumes uh, to both sides of the rooms and filtering them. I just realized that I could do the job I'm doing sitting down, and I wasn't. I'm foolish. So this has more white. It's a lighter color. I'm going to go again over top of this. The KB is like a stuffed filmmaker. That guy is out of his mind. Well, yeah, I mean, he knows what he wants, and I think that all haunts are a representation of their own. They should be a reflection of their owner or their designer because, you know, you, you need to walk through someone's head, kind of, basically. So... Uh, yeah, I missed her too. She were working. Once you touch someone, it's difficult to continue the scare. There's no room for escalation. Yeah, you don't have anywhere else to go, exactly. Um, and you, you, at that point, you've broken your promise to them. The promise is, if I get my hands on you, I'm going to kill you. And if you do get your hands on them and you don't kill them, you don't have anywhere else to go. What advice can you give to someone who wants to get into the prop making and haunt biz? I do some volunteer work at Bright Kingdom with graphic design, but not enough to fill my passion or my wallet. Uh, who's that at Bright Kingdom? Uh, that is Hawkeye 79. Okay. Do you know Ed Gannon? He plays out there some. Uh, Tim Dunn. Warren Maxwell plays out there some. Uh, Tim is the owner. Um, yeah, I know a lot of guys out there. Um, read me the question one more time. I got wrapped up in where, he is, where he's at. What advice do you give to someone who wants to get into prop making and haunt biz? I do volunteer work at Bright Kingdom with graphic design, but not enough to fill my passion or my wallet. Uh, don't make something that someone else is making. Look for, you have to develop the ability to Look for what isn't there. What do haunters need that they don't have? What's not available? Um, I walked the show floor of Trans World several years, and I saw no one here is selling lift, you, lift shoes. That's ridiculous. So in my booth this year, we had lift shoes. Um, yeah. Here, here's a, a tip. Uh, on things to make. There are like 18 different styles of predation, meaning everybody knows about an ambush predator where it hides and it waits for something to come by and then it leaps out and attacks. Almost every haunted house scare is based off of a um, ambush predator style. One of the things that I have been doing is looking at the other styles of predation and what is it that I can do uh, like so if if haunt actors were getting scares based off this other style of predation what tools would they need for ambush predators you need a door to jump out of or a curtain or a rattle can because that's that sudden violent noise um, you know there's what other tools would you use if you were using a different style of predation as a scare tactic? The closest I've gone to touching is I've slid into the floor and flopped on the floor, then crawled and untied someone's shoes with my teeth until they noticed me. Well, that's, that's a way to do. you got to be careful and read people really well. 
Always. This is Hops. Do you work for Dark Hour? Yes, I do. I, I don't. I'm not an employee, as such, but uh, and I work. I we used to have a side show, side haunt at Dark Hour, the first six years, and uh, I was manager, actor, uh, fed the crew, and what have you for that show. Now that show has folded, and they've put in a new show. So I also put on a costume and act when they need me to. And so, yes, I act in the shows. She worked with me out in the queue line. She, uh, she's done quite a bit. All right, and I've also done some of the uh, other work there. So I kind of, I'm kind of like a junk drawer. I do just about. If I need something done dependably, I ask my wife to do it. Oh, thank you. Don't give your advice away. I took my wife to the drive-in theater in our hearse. No one would park beside us. I'm not sure why. Can't imagine. That's funny. Okay, so now I'm just going to go back with black, just like the rest of the mask was pretty much black. I'm going to go in and spots that I patched. The only time I ever got touched was the werewolf incident at Reaper's Realm. And I remember you mentioning that before. What was your base coat? Uh, black mask, latex mask paint. Is that a latex ma mask you're... I'm sorry. Yes. Is that a latex mix you are using? Or dry brushing. Yes, it's my normal latex mix. I only use one kind of paint on masks. And I was able to get the other areas, you know, much further along while I was waiting on this to get dry enough. Does Dark Hour do an on stage theater show? Uh, we do. For October, we do the story of the show you're about to go through. Uh, for the other shows throughout the year, we'll have different and various entertainment. Sometimes it's a singer, sometimes it's, you know, it, it's, it's whatever, it's something that fits the show. We have Irish dancers on the St. Patrick's show, something that fits the show. Yeah. Yeah. Thought it was a caveman that did the humping, said Jordan Bunsey to Cobweb Candlesticks. You hump people one time, one time, that I told about. You know, I always tell people if you do haunted houses for one year, you'll have a lifetime of stories. And I, I stand by that statement. There's just so much that we pack into a haunt season. Have you come across any other? products that you're excited about since Loctite Punk? Oh, yes. Uh, Gorilla Crystal Clear Caulking. Because it dries solid. It dries very hard. So it's almost like a water clear resin. Perfect for like solid, rigid icicles. It's wonderful. Alright, now that has to dry before I can put another layer on. I'm a huge fan of Halloween and Magic. Have you ever considered or have you ever used illusions that I haunt? And what are your thoughts on this? Like the haunted mansion at Disney World? Uh, we, yes, everybody uses illusions in their haunt. Um, even if it's just misdirection or whatever, but absolutely. Um, we use a, a big pep ghost effect for a Wolfman transformation. We, uh, we, do, we do a lot of stuff. Yes, we use illusions. A lot of it is Pepper Ghost, Pepper's Ghost based. Um, I've worked at haunts that have, you know, the fake guillotine. That's an illusion. What did you say you got the Ron head? The Ron head. Asylum Props. Richard Teachout's company. Asylum Props. I 
do have some favorite scary stories that I will wait until it's story time and I will tell you. I'll tell you a few. Okay, we have a lot of stories, don't we? What's that? We have a lot of stories. There has yeah, one yeah. my favorite scary story was, and I guess, are you talking about during a haunt night? I think they mean during a haunt night. Yeah, because there's, oh, how do you, how do you pick? Uh, we want to make a theater show in our queue line that is introducing our main character, kind of like how Halloween Horror Nights did when there was a Jack show. Yeah. Yep. Will the gorilla silicone hold paint? I've never tried to paint it. It is so rigid, though, I actually assumed that it would. the first 30 minutes of the video, what is the shop rag for? Um, I actually cut these and patched them back to fit the dome of the mask a little better. So... Are there any monsters that you made exclusively for Dark Hour only? Um, yeah, all the time. I mean, I don't, I don't offer stuff I make for Dark Hour up for sale, you know. Uh, we have a few things that we're going to offer in the future, but those two worlds really haven't collided too much. Dark Hour has been my day job, and this is what I do at night. Um, um, nine to five feeds the family, six to midnight builds the empire, you know? What is in the refrigerator? Uh, Coke, delicious Coke Zeros. Um, a couple beers for others, I don't really drink. Um, yeah, not, not a lot of food, sadly. On the other side of haunting, I got to close. I got too close to the wagon, and a tourist almost pulled me under it. Oh no! Psycho <laughs> Axman says, "Oh man, it's a Coke Zero. Damn you!" Uh, does yeah. Dark Hour pay the actors, or are they volunteers? Oh, we're paid. Paid, paid, paid. Ten bucks an hour. Good night, sir. He must be one of those essential people. He's always going to bed early. I am non essential. Yeah, it's hot. Have you ever done any movie work? Um, no. Um, very minor. I've done some, um, the easiest answer is no. I, I, but I don't want to do movie work. I'm not a failed movie effects artist. I'm a haunted house effects artist. This is my calling. This is what I want to be doing. I want to make monsters for haunted attractions. Um, I don't want to make monsters for movie. I'm doing this to pay the bills. It's not the case. This is exactly where I want to be. I'm an NFL mascot. Neither am I, my friend. That's what's essential. Uh, is that Jordan? Yes. Uh, you know what? I actually follow you on Instagram, Jordan, and uh, it's very entertaining. I, uh, I, really, I really enjoy your Instagram. Still testing the heat gun, asked Tommy Pierce. Always test your heat gun. So if you put your, front, your hand in front of the heat gun, it'll hurt. Yeah, yeah. That, that's true. They're not wrong. How did you get on with the giant worm head roll? Great. Great. It's actually ready for foam. Um, it's all poured up. It's ready for foam. As um, soon as we get back to work. <laughs> the technique is nothing bad. I'm just blotching the back so it's not black. I want it to blend in a little better than just being all black. 
tablets and candlesticks now wants to know about the giant worm thing? Well, on a Facebook group that I am an admin for and moderator, Latex Mask Central, I did a quick video of us pouring up a mold. And that mold, I found out, weighs 420 pounds. So it's a big mold. And it takes 25 gallons of latex just to fill it. How much are you selling the grave digger for the whole costume? Three fifty, I believe. Uh, any masks for sale today? Uh, you go to our website. We have masks on the website. The website is stiltbeastudios.com. Good night, a lot of folks. How do you guys do auditions for your scare actors? Uh, we say, hey, come audition. Um, there's a, a little process that we go through. Um, I just actually explained this last night. Um, I have a very simple audition process, short interview. Um, I ask them uh, why they want to work in a haunted house. And I'll accept almost anything except uh, I, wanted, I want the money. Then I laugh, and I laugh, and I laugh. Yeah. And then I have them walk across the room as if they were a zombie. Back and forth. Walk across the room as if you were a werewolf. Back and forth. And then walk across the room as if you were a ballerina hit by a school bus. Back and forth. And that, from those three things, I can judge their creativity. I can judge their uh, physical prowess in some ways. Have you ever been able to incorporate color resin into any of your mask works? Colored resin? Uh, no. Well, I mean, just for teeth and stuff. Like teeth, teeth, I, I make out of resin on occasion. Psycho X Man, no masks on shelves. I think he wants to see the masks he's got here. What masks does he want to see? No masks on shelves? Well, that's my sewing shelf over there, and the machine is actually on the table. You're on a different part of it. This is the wall that often has some masks on it and such. And those bo each of those boxes contain a different project or costume. And over here, uh, on that table, you'll see a few werewolves. And over here, you'll see some APOC helmets and things I'm working on. And up there are the top hats I made yesterday. Maybe later. I don't have a lot of room in here. Remind me later on. My actors are not allowed to say boo or rar. And, and that is perfectly fine. As long as you tell them what they can say. If you can nail ballerina hit by a school bus, you got the job. You know what? Even if you try, that's the kicker. Even if you try, just don't look at me and say, I got nothing. That, that's, that's what I'm looking for there. I want to see the attempt. I want to see someone who's not frozen in their tracks because I asked to do something that was hard. Or a situation popped up that they were not expecting. Mm -hmm. Because that happens all the time as a haunt act. And they have to get around that. Okay. Will the old man, old woman mask fit a large head? Yes. Ever have anyone lay down and say they can't move because they were hit by a bus? Uh, I did have one who just played dead. And I told them I wanted more. And uh, they continued to play dead. Thank you.
man, you are too much. Uh, Psycho Axe Man, my wife says you are too much. You are incredibly generous. Ever had anyone, oh, he said never broke character then, I guess. Don't uh, be sorry, it's very generous. Big thing say. of mine, man, is I uh, I don't break character. Um, I, I have a job to do. And there are people who are there to help you. I'm not one of them. Can you show an up-close picture of the mask with the yellow hat on it? Well, that's not painted yet. That's not painted yet. So... Weird Kid. Hi, Weird Kid. Hey, Weird Kid. Okay, eye bags. Hardest single project you have ever worked on. Hardest? The hardest single project. Okay. I tend to forget everything that's negative. So just keep that in mind. Um, I don't remember the bad stuff. It is either a blessing or a curse, depending on how you look at it and what I am supposed to remember. Like, don't you remember how bad this was last time? Nope, completely forgot. Don't have that power. Um, I just remember at the end, I thought it was awesome. Uh, I don't look back and think of anything as being hard. What, okay? Yes. Haunt season, 2012. Maybe maybe 2011, black and white year. At Screams? At Screams. Okay. Yeah. And my haunt, Trail of Terror... We were just very far behind, and I really had to rely on my Most, people. Yeah. I had to rely on my people to do way more work than they normally did. Uh, and in a way, it was nice uh, because it, it it changed some things, like for down the road. But uh, it was also, you know, I had to say, hi, I'm Alan Hops. I overextend because I was way overextended. Um, I had a sandbag list that I had to get done to get the park open, and I had to do that, and I had to give my people a list. So, yeah. But anyway. I think I think the toughest, the, the hardest projects for you were not what you were making. You never have a hard time making something. Right. It's the time element that yes. is a factor. Oh, uh, first monster museum build. The first monster museum. The monster museum. museum. I will never. Yeah. I didn't. When you go to when you need a story time, that's yeah. the story. I'm I didn't sleep for four days. Yeah, it was more than that. Maybe it was more than that. I'll, I'll tell that story. But like, did not sleep for four days. I'll tell that story. So now every time I stay awake too long, I, my eyes just start tearing and I start crying. Like years later, <laughs> that still happens. Will YouTube Wednesdays ever come back? Yes, uh, you'll see a YouTube Wednesday video probably next Wednesday because we're going to surprise them. We were? Yes. We're not going to surprise them. We are surprise These are our people. Them. We're going to surprise everybody else. We're going to surprise them. How many people are on here? 6,600. See? 6,600? 6, 6, no. 66. Just 66. <laughs> Got my still beast apron in the mail. Thank you. It's awesome. We it's have we have forty thousand subscribers. We're gonna surprise like thirty nine of them. You remember the tauntaun falling out of the house? Yeah, because that was awesome. I thought I was robbed. That was cool. Nope, it was just downstairs. I love the walkthrough video of the black and white haunt. I wish I had a chance to attend that one at dark out. It was beautiful. Uh, it was a labor of love. It was a Valentine. You know, I I, uh, I I loved it. I believed in it, and that's one of those projects that you look back on with nothing but fondness. It was it was beautiful. There was a lot of nostalgia in that. It was a love letter. That's what I called it. Yeah, it was a love letter to classic horror and you know the Universal monsters. All that. Thank you, Connie. We thought it was beautiful too. It was uh, it, the the night, final night. We 
we closed it after, let's see, was, the first year was 2005 that we did trail, and then the last year was 2016. So the last night of that show was very, uh, was very emotional in a good way. You know, it was time. It was really a special show. Very special. I'm in the process of having a new logo created for my haunt. In your opinion, what are the most important aspects of a logo to have? What an interesting question. Um, simple. Uh, it needs to be simple. Those real, ornate, and scrolly logos. Look at the companies who do the best. Coke, Pepsi. Uh, think about the symbolism. Think about the, the simple silhouettes that they use. I think it's uh, simple memorableness. It's pretty big for logos. I would love to make a haunt where every room is something extremely terrifying that could actually happen. You know, like IRS tax audits. <laughs> yeah. Those are scary. Yep. Again, that's more of CNN. I prefer Werewolf. Act. If you could do a haunt about a licensed character, who would it be? Pumpkinhead. He's a fun looking monster. Looks good. Does good. Uh, the Relic would be another good one. Um, because if the way the relic was made, you know, it combined DNA to make the monster. And you could combine the different DNA from different creatures to get several different types of relic creature. But also, I would love to do a haunted house that was themed after uh, Nightbreed, the Clive Barker um, movie, one of my favorites. Pups are zonked. Yes, they are. Them zonked puppies. Would you be available to provide your thoughts on what we have so far logo-wise? Uh, shoot me an email, yes. How did you go about building a haunt in a city? License and purpose? We paid for it. We, When there was a, a fee that came up, we paid it. When they said... It's $200,000 to put in a uh, smoke alarm system, uh, a sprinkler system. We, we paid it. When uh, you have to pay $1,000 to uh, drain a oil tank every four months when you don't even sell food, we pay it. So by the power of money is how we did it. There, I, I, I'm not going to say a way to skirt around a law. A lot of those laws are there for a good reason, especially your fire safety laws. Um, we're all going to pay one day when a haunt screws up and kills a bunch of people because it isn't safe. We're all going to pay that day. Right now we're getting by and off pretty easy because it hasn't really happened. If you can stand in your haunted house and say it's safe, then you're okay. But really, how hard is it to get out? Really, um, do, you have, do you have enough emergency exits? Do you have a sprinkler system? So I am so sold on sprinkler systems. We actually had a small fire at dark hour, and the sprinkler system put it out and kept it from becoming a big fire. That was my favorite building fire ever because it really showed what that sprinkler system would do. It says, I'm talking like building it from scratch, like building it from scratch, permits and things like that. Oh, then you have to uh, draw up your plans, then have your plans redrawn by an architect. Uh, and that shouldn't cost more than like $4,000 or so. And stamped. Depending. And they have to be stamped by then by the city engineers. But your architect will help that go through. Um, 
and then, you know, the whole time be going over your plan with your fire marshal so they're not surprised by what you're trying to do. Fire marshals hate surprises. Like even on their birthday. We did a haunted house at Alice Springs called Unearthed. Yes. Which yep. Was designed by the producer of Blair Witch Project. It was really cool meeting him. That was a beautiful show, Zachary. We saw it. Was that mm -hmm. producer Ben Rock? Was that I think he was their art guy. That was a beautiful we went through that twice. We went we went through Unearthed, yeah. Yeah, we did twice. It was just gorgeous. Yep. Great fun. We loved it. Got T shirts. We got the Unearthed T shirts. Ballpark, went there. What is the cost behind insurance for a haunt? Gosh. Uh, it's based on your attendance. So your insurance could be three hundred dollars. Your insurance could be uh, the trail. I anticipated six thousand people a year, and my insurance was around twelve hundred dollars. Psycho accident says I'm a scrub. Cowboys and Kelsey says you don't get no love from me. Uh, let's see. In Gene the passenger Lorenzo. side of his best friend's ride? <laughs> 250000 to start. Jordan Munson, I'm chill out about the questions, but first, best DVD for advanced street acting on your website? Advanced street acting? Don't have it. Yeah. Uh, most of mine are for haunts to show their actors inside the show. Uh, I was having a class at Transworld, so it'll probably be next year, on um, Q. Q acting and um, Midway acting, and I will probably end up doing a DVD on that now that I have a little bit more time to do such things. I will uh, do a DVD on it, um, on outside acting. So look for that in the next coming months, uh, before October probably. Well, they can look at them. <laughs> what kind of insurance, like, is it a liability or what? what kind of it's up to you. I mean, what do you want coverage for? What's, I mean, what are you trying to protect? You get the insurance that protects that. Call Ken Donay. He'll talk to you all day long about insurance. D-O-N-A-T from Donay Insurance. Uh, Ken Donay, call him. It's free to talk to him. Ask all these questions to him. Uh, I'm not an insurance guy. I uh, I just scare people in the safest way possible. Now you're about to see a airbrush that I have not cleaned or even emptied in months. Cobwebs and candlesticks. Oh, a pot. <laughs> they're they're don't look. They're naked. They're looking. They're naked. Yeah. Yeah, so this is gummed up beyond all recognition. The next 30 minutes of the video will probably be me cleaning the airbrush. Had to grab some gloves, gang. I'm gonna use some chemicals. That one is part of the village people. What's well, the, it's going to be all black. What is the PSI in uh, 80 over there at the uh, compressor? Um, yeah, but I, I just keep it at 80. But I, I paint mask here. I don't do like makeup. Hey, Alan, how would you go about making a gelatinous cube costume? I just ripped My wife doesn't know what a gelatinous cube is. I, and she's wondering why I know what a gelatinous cube is. It's a D&D &D monster. Um, I would probably take, I'd make a wire or PVC frame, paint it chrome, and then I would wrap it in um, plastic wrap. Plastic wrap around the outside, like the clear plastic wrap. And then... Um, inside of a gelatinous cube, you can see the gear of dead adventurers. So get like a plastic sword and hang it inside or put it up against the side or helmets or whatever. You know, you want to put some adventurer gear in there. 
And I think as long as you wore dark colors on the inside, you could pick it up and move the cube around and be a gelatinous cube. I had a moment there of <clears throat> taking umbrage to you, assuming I did not know what this was. And then you started talking, and I realized you're right. I don't know. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I, don't I, I know. know. I know. I, I, I'm not gamer cool. Would you hand me a pair of needle nose pliers, honey? I shall. I'll, uh, Thanks. The horrors of the airbrush when you don't clean them. Yeah, I just don't clean it. Like, much at all. Barely ever. I've been using this. Yep. The 10 by 10 cube. It's gelatinous. It's better green jello. <laughs> Skeletons and coins and goo. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you got to put in there. Jello shots. We had an outdoor haunt at Bush called Quarter that incorporated a mirror maze right next to a of corn stalks and sun plus mirrors, polished corn stalks to go up in flames. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, you got to be careful with that. Thanks, Connie. <laughs> Connie said, that's okay, I didn't know either. I, no, I'm not a, I am not gamer cool. I, do not, I, I don't have that cool gamer experience. Most people I'm friends with, but I do So I am painting the dried ink. This is alcohol-based ink, pinata inks, out of the end of the airbrush. A nice hook horror costume would be badass. Owlbear, man. Go full owlbear. That's how we learned corn stalks don't hold flame at all that well. Nope. Comes right off of them. Look at that. This is why you get a Pache H, my friends. Ta-da! Great. Now I'm going to bring my heads over here. Give me a moment. Just give me a moment. Got to be. Owl bears are pretty freaking awesome. Yes. It's all fun and games. You get chased by an owl bear. <laughs> you can like talking a different language. Thank you, Scott. Scott's putting up the link for the inks. Hooray! Say goodnight to Janine. Good night, Janine. I'm trying to find some, oh, a five-gallon bucket. I need to find a riser to hold this head up higher. Gotta go, guys. Gotta do a marathon training in the early morning. Good night, everyone. Hope you have a good one. Hard beauty effects. Wow. You run marathons? Sure. That's impressive. You know what? Stupid rust monsters. Hate them. Hate them. I was thinking baby gelatinous cube, maybe two feet square on the hidden wheels pulled along on a leash. No, man. Make one you can get inside of. I see you're a rust -oleum. Yes. Yes, I am. I suck at things. Teach me. <laughs> um, put them in the airbrush. I don't thin them. I, uh, I just go. I use them right out of the bottle. Uh, the Pache H is one of my secret weapons. Because, I mean, you saw how easy and how little cleaning I had to do. Even after gross abuse, this sucker just keeps on chucking. What was the very first prop costume you... Yes, the first latex mask you, ever made was a Bigfoot mask. You remember me. It was a Bigfoot mask. But, I mean, before I made a real mask, I, uh... You zoom in, please. They want to see closer. Psycho X man is trying to learn. Give him some love. So it was a Bigfoot costume? It was a Bigfoot mask. Okay. But, uh, probably... Like first, like big costume or whatever, I made. There was a haunt in 1994 where I made a umbrella uh, on top of a golf cart, and he and we drove him at people. I made an alien 
uh, on a shopping cart that an actor was behind it and just walked forward and pushed it forward. And that was the scare. I, we stole the shopping cart from Kmart, then we took it back at the end of Haunt Season. Psycho Axe Man just donated again. Well, you are amazing. Very okay. kind. Uh, a Zorn would be cool, but hard to move in. I'm a Krylon person, but Walmart stopped carrying it this year. Um, here's what I don't like about the Rust-Oleum 2X, is that uh, the cans clog pretty easily. So I always buy more than what I need, like I buy an extra can, and then I just take it back to Home Depot and I say, this is clogged up whether it's a quarter can or a half a can or whatever. And I say, you know, it won't come out, and they just give me a new one. Horror Beauty says, training for the first marathon. I did 13 half marathons and never flew. That's awesome. I'm proud of you. I use a lot of Rust-Oleum 2X. I only run when there's cookies. What do you think is the most underused effect or scare in a hunt? Uh, giving an actor a light switch. That, and I was going to mention this in my trans world class. It is such a powerful tool for the actor to have a light switch to turn the lights on and off in a room. Um, whether it's the lights are on and they, you know, like, imagine this. Like, you're walking into a haunt room and there's an actor who's just standing just off the side of the path and you've and you got to walk by him. And when you get within three feet of him, the lights go out. Then that actor, doesn't matter, he doesn't have to do anything. It scares the hell out of him. And then he can go to the other side of the room and turn the lights back on. And he just performed magic, no matter how long it took. Giving the actor a light switch to turn the lights on and off in a room is underutilized. That is a grave digger. Paint only. He'll get hair next. I'm going to bring the other grave digger over here and get him. You know what? I'm going to leave him here for now. I'll show you both of them and just what a difference the uh, airbrush made. I change out tips a lot. So you tap the airbrush. Um, I spray it with carburetor clean. And I fished out some of the gunk with a needle. See the difference how this one has shadow shading and stuff? And this one is pretty flat and this one pops a little bit more. Um, airbrush is a good tool. I can't stand the smell of a stolen for some reason. Well, that's that's fine. Thank you. There normally is cookies and beer at the end of uh, at the end of the marathon. Good night. I hope to see you at the next one. Good night. Yes. We use remote controlled outlets, plugs, lights in the outlets and give the actor the remote. Yeah, you have to be careful with that though, because a lot of them are on the same frequency. So you might end up, you know, one remote could work two rooms. Uh, you really have to be careful of that. If I'm running, you better run too, because something is running after me. You only have to be faster than the guy running behind than the guy behind you. Or hurt him. Then you only have to be faster than him moving with a limp. And this is just airbrush control and, you know, knowing what your airbrush is doing. Working fine lines. Uh, I want shadows underneath, so I, I tend to shoot up from underneath quite a bit. And now I can't hit on top, so all my shading is going to be up from underneath. Using the airbrush to strengthen the jaw. Do you still see very deep wrinkles? Do I what deep wrinkles? Uh, I use different depth of wrinkles, actually. Uh, some are deep and some are not. Um, just like on a on a face. Don't 
Don't expect my eyelids for pinholes. Good night and peace to all. Hopwebs and pins. Hooray! Good night. Okay, I think that is two grave diggers done. At least made in the sock masks, put on head forms, and uh, painted all the way. Tomorrow I'll be able to put hair on them, give put their hats on them, give them their jabot collars. Now, these don't have human heads in them. Let me go ahead and swap these out. And I'll throw a hat on one so you guys can see what the hat looks like on it. My partner uses a crutch to get around. Any thoughts on how to change it up for a pirate cosplay? Yeah, have you seen those mono legs? Where, you know, I, I don't know where their leg is hurt, but if their knee can rest on something, then there's a mono crutch where it just straps to your leg. Um, they're not terrible expensive, and it's hands-free crutches, basically. And uh, I was going to do one of those into a pipe. Oh, I was going to grab a hat. Who is your idol when it comes to special effects? Boy. Um, got to look at uh, Rick Baker, Stan Winston. I thought you had one with a ribbon. Um, I took it off so I could paint it. Oh. And with the hair, that's going to be the perfect size. All right, Rick Baker, Stan Winston. Um, I think some of the best uh, sculptors out there are Drew Duchel, uh, Andrew Freeman. Um, mine is drawing a blank. There's a lot of really good ones. Really good, man. And once I put the uh, the ribbon on there, I make a little tombstone that says R.I.P. that goes up here on the hat, so you know he's a grave digger. Uh, and he's, he gets gray hair that kind of hangs down to here and on the back of the head. Uh, it's a nice finished look. But it's ten o'clock. We have made monsters, and now it's time for us to not make monsters, and maybe nap a little bit. Uh, just a grave digger. Uh, just a grave digger. Not necessarily the hat box ghost. Uh, I certainly have made monsters that were hat ghost inspired. Uh, I have a character that I do called Varney, and the hat box ghost is one of the inspirations for that. Um, but you're trying to trick me into staying on longer. <laughs> I need to go to bed. You guys are awesome. And go make stuff. Thanks for watching.